Well, hello, everybody. I uh, just want to let you know this is going to be the second time for me to turn this dang thing apart because the first time I did it, started editing the video, and just didn't like the way. I just didn't like it. Um, and uh, But anyways, moving forward, I just want to give a big shout out to my buddy, uh, Eccentric, uh, for giving this to me. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, him acquiring this involved in armed robbery. Armed robbery and some fentanyl, but we're not going to go there. I mean, he has a checkered, uh, checkered lifestyle. I don't trust. But anyways, uh, I have used the help. It looks like I've already given this one hot supper and yes, I have, um, on, uh, isolators on, so on generators. Hold on a second. You know, those guys. So, uh, If you look underneath here, you got those two bolts. These are, um, I can never remember what the hell they're called. But anyway, they're the shipping bolts, and they're always completely, cla completely clamped down in shipment. And then what I do is when I'm doing uh, installation is I loosen these guys up down the bottom thread. And you really can't get anything in here. And usually I'm doing, there's probably about 16 of these on a generator. But... What makes this guy cool is I can just sit there and get in like that and and hit him hard like that. And that tool right there with this kind of, you know, like, uh, kind of production where it's like you know i'm doing 16 of these guys not 16 bolts 16 of these guys so it's that's 64 bolts no 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 48 yeah i can't, i went to california public school so i'm sorry about my math um but anyway um uh, but yeah dude for repetitive stuff where you're sitting there just doing one thing over and over again it's a cat's ass. If you're sitting there, you know, taking apart an engine on an engine stand, I'd recommend an impact, just a regular impact. But anyway, let's get back to the show on hand. All right, let's dig into this. So, take off the battery. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, these guys are the big ones. Yep. But yeah, this is one of those things where when you need it, this thing's a cat's ass. And I would recommend to people staying with the smaller batteries because uh, you're able to get in tighter places and, uh, you know, do things. Just so you know, guys, I hate this part. The last video, my daughter was in here and uh, she fr freaking freaked out when she saw me hammering on a uh, a tool. I think if she had the word, she'd probably say something along the lines of, What the hell are you doing? Uh, let me grab something. This, uh,. Car pin here. I've never had so much trouble with a cotter pin. Or not a cotter pin, a roll pin. Tap, 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 tap. There's a spoon. On with my mission.
One thing I did notice they did put some security screws in some strategic spots to keep people uh, out of it. But you can't keep me out. <laughs> Okay. Oh, <laughs> there's some remarks I can make that uh, are uh, YouTube non-YouTube friendly. So, got the variable switch. It's um, I think I already mentioned this. Don't uh, expect me to know a lot about electronics because I know shit about electronics. All I know is uh, oh. The ones and zeros make the world go around. So there's a up close and personal shot of the board. It's conformal coded. I believe. Oh heck, what do these do? Um, there's some guy screaming at the the computer monitor right now and telling me that I'm an idiot. And yeah. Um, I think the, those are the SCRs that do the heavy lifting. And it looks like they have a huge heat sink right behind it. And it's a, this is revision six. So on this side, you can see the little for the uh, variable speed. And here's the actual physical on and off going to um, coming from the motor. Let's pull the motor out. I have to find the, the tiny allen that I used to take that out. And there's the mo the number for the motor. Um, you can tell that it's it is monitoring its own speed through these three uh, different leads, and they can't really tell what they do. But you got your main power and then all the sensing. But I'm trying to give you guys as much view as possible so you guys could come to your own conclusions. Anyway. Let's uh, d proceed. So you look down in there. You got your planetary set. You got a bearing support. Then you got your planetary set behind that. So. Yo we. Tell you right now, this bearing support right here is one of the hardest pieces to get back in here. Because it has to be lined up. Ta da! So, they look like uh, powder melt gears, and then that center, the um, the center output is uh, been broached, and it looks like these pins for the pins have been drilled. 
So, not much going on. Then you got the three little plantar gears. So, anyway, let me dig onto it, pull the head out. Why is my freaking sampling pliers always set the wrong way? You know? Carefully. So. So it's just a basic ratchet head. Um, just sits in like that. And all this does is it flips the teeth from one side to the other. To, um, so you get the, let me see if we half engage it. So the ratcheting effect happens this way on this one, but flip it to the other side. That guy does a ratcheting action. Um, so, but, uh, anyways, if anything is going to break on this, I assume it's going to be these guys. Just, they're just going to wear out unless you're one of those guys that will get on an air ratchet and sit there, put it on there and then give it a huge, uh, you know, little bit of a, how do you do ya, how you do ya big old tug on it to get it going, then hit it with, uh, the power. That's how you make these things break. Um, this guy right here, oh, the output shaft, ugh. inside there is two, a double, uh, two sets of needle bearings. Let me get into the light. Eh. So, uh, this guy. I believe it's a so for a second there I thought this was uh cast aluminum and you know I'm like this has too much gravity to be uh cast aluminum and uh sure as shit it's actually uh casted steel and uh I could see why they did that for durability from you know people you know dropping it you know running across a concrete floor because this this is what gets abused because uh, a tip always gets abused. Um, so I, I could, now I kind of get it because uh, before though the, this is what my one of my biggest complaints about this tool was this head was too big. If it was about half the size, it'd have been great. But for durability, now I can understand why, and you know I can I, I think I appreciate this tool more because uh, they thought of this part being you know more durable. With that being said, there it is. Um, you know, honestly, I recommend you getting one if um, you uh, use a lot of an air ratchet and, you know, are ready to get into the battery world. Um, but it's, you know, there's, like everything else, there's pros and cons with this. And uh, the cons with this is that um, you're not... It's not just a piece of uh, cast aluminum you're throwing around. Now you're you got some electronics in there, so now you probably got a little more breakable factor. Um, but on the other hand, is that you could take this dose in your toolbox and go to pick and pull, and uh, use this at pick and pull with uh, out in the air. So my end thoughts on this. Uh, whole uh modern day puzzle is it's a great tool if you could use it because the one thing i can see with this is that it's it's starting to lean into a little bit of a specialty region where you know i know there's you know garage nuts out there that 
can't use this at home, but they want it and they, they have it and they, you know, they get scared when it gets scuffed up or, you know, it starts looking like, you know, greasy hands have touched it. But, um, yeah, I, th I think this is a, for a person that's going to use this, I think it's a great tool. Um, and, uh, like, uh, showing you in the beginning of this, where this is great for like, you know, just repeat repetitive work where, you know, you're sitting there doing one thing and you're having to get into a tight spot base constantly. It's basically what I'm getting at. It's, it's like, um, you use this in place of where you're in, you usually normally use your impact with a socket on to get something. You can use this to get in there. Um, and actually, I'm actually, a, I was actually before thinking about getting in one of those, uh, M12, uh, right angle, uh, um, impacts, quarter inch impacts to get into the tight spaces. But I'm not sure with this now, cause this is actually doing a lot what I actually need it to do. So I, I'm going to reassemble it and put it, throw it back in the truck. Cause you know, I love this tool and I'm going to, I'd recommend if you could use this and you feel like you use this, buy it. So anyway, on that bombshell, this is going to be reassembled all about now. And there you go. It is that it's like that easy. I mean, it just the pieces fall together. It just falls. It just goes back to together with no problem. Um, but in reality, is kind of like shoving five pounds of turd into a three ounce bag. <clears throat> and um, more importantly, the trick uh, to a good ending is always do this before you take it apart. Because in reality, it's still a part on the bench. It's going to sit there for about three weeks. Um, I did forget to mention the case on this is um, PA6 glass fiber 30%. Um, it's a little on the soft side, but whatever. It's going to do what I need it to do. So you guys have a great night.